Good morning. Today is February. Uh, what is it? February Today is 25th. Friday, Friday, February 25th, 2023. 24th. No, it's 23. We are in 2023. No, you, no, it is the 24th. Friday the 24th. Today is Friday the 24th. Right. 2023. Right. Uh, I will be the moderator for this class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder. Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, and certain other foreign countries with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, and Australia. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. Please mute that. Yes. Thank you. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. 
Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning, we will begin with a prayer by Dr. Martha Hassell from our Brooklyn branch. We will have a song by Dr. Jackie McCain from Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
Our scripture lesson will be John, the 13th chapter, to be read by Dr. Connor Neserly. And our readers for the session will be Drs. Jackie McCain and Dr. Marie Winters. Good morning, class. May we all just bow our hearts and minds, and let's just give Yahweh thanks through his son, Yahshua, for allowing us the chance for immortal glorification and salvation. We want to ask that he please still our hearts and minds that we can focus on him and the things that are being taught here in this lecture. And we want to ask that he strengthen those that are not able to come and give us the power to know that he really is. We wanted him, just thank him ever so much for allowing us to gather here in this format. With one voice, let us all say hallelujah. 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 I sing blessed assurance this morning. Yahweh's will. Blessed assurance. Yahshua is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heirs of salvation, purchase of Yah, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising Yahshua all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising Yahshua all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of Yahshua to give us light. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking within, filled with his mercy, lost in his love. This is, this is my story. This is my song. Praising Yahshua all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising Yahshua all the day long. Hallelujah. 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 I will be reading John, the 13th chapter, out of the King James Version, inserting the proper names where supposed. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Yahshua, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from Yahweh, and went to Yahweh, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Sire, dost thou wash my feet? Yahshua answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. 
Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Yahshua answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Sire, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yahshua saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master, and sire, and say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your sire and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his master. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. When Yahshua had thus said, he was troubled in spirit. And testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Yahshua's bosom one of his disciples, whom Yahshua loved. Simon Peter, therefore, beckoned him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. Then when lying on Yahshua's breast, said unto him, Sire, who is it? Yahshua answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him and said, Yahshua unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew what, for what intent he spake unto this unto him. For some of them brought thought, because Judas had the bag, that Yahshua said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Then he, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Yahshua said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and Yahweh is glorified in him. If Yahweh be glorified in him, Yahweh shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while am I with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither you go, or Yahudas, as I said unto the Yahudas, whether, whether I go, you cannot come, so now I say unto you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have loved one another. Simon Peter said unto him, Sire, whether goest thou? Yahshua answered him, Whether I go, thou cannot follow me, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter saith unto him, Sire, why can't I why can I not why can I not follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Yahshua answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Very verily I say unto thee. The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. 
That was John, the 13th chapter of the King James Version. Hallelujah. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. Thank all of our participants. And I will now turn this back to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that we were able to assemble today. And um, Dr. Kent had suggested that as we read Acts, that we go back and read the questions that are being put forward and answered in um, the part that we've been reading about the um, the Acts of the Apostles. So um, what I was thinking about is, uh, I was thinking like, well, we could read that and then we can go back to our study, which was John the, uh, 13th chapter because that was the last scripture that we had gone to anybody else have any thoughts about that okay let me see so here it is right does everybody see it? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we could start reading from there. And then we could um, do John 13, because I did work with some things and I think other people probably worked with it too. Marie? Is she here? Yes, she's here. Yes, I was just trying to unmute. I had all kinds of things going. There were many things that the apostles and their associates had written during their lifetime in their manuscripts, namely the so-called four gospels, which are the biography of the life of Yahshua under the law, fulfilling the law and the prophets while he was in the flesh. The Acts of the Apostles is a historical document along with the other epistles of instruction, encouragement, and admonishment, all of which are incorrectly labeled the New Testament, that have continued to confuse and divide the so-called dignitaries and intellectuals of early and latter-day so-called Christendom into many fashions after the decease of the apostles. For example, if all carnal ordinances, including water baptism, was under the old covenant and practiced by Jews only in all its miscellaneous sacrificial and ceremonial forms or modes were actually abolished at the cross, it's Colossians 2.14, and were a dead work to the Jews not to mention the Gentiles. Then the three most important questions are as follows. Why did Philip the deacon dispersed from Jerusalem go into the water and baptize the Ethiopian eunuch after the crucifixion of Yahshua and after the day of Pentecost? Two. Two, why then did the apostle Peter command Cornelius the Gentile centurion and his household to be baptized in water after they had received the Holy Spirit seven years after the day of Pentecost. Three, why then did a Jew named Apollos continue the practice of John's water baptism of repentance after Pentecost? Did you want to stop there? Or just keep going. Uh, yeah, we might as well get the scriptures. It says, uh, okay. You want to read Colossians 2.14? Colossians 2.14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So baptism, physical water baptism was nailed to the cross. Yes. That was under the old covenant and it was given to the Jews only. Right. Okay. And we're dead work to the Jews. Hebrews 6. 1 Hebrews and 2. 6. Therefore, mm -hmm. 
from the principles of the doctrine of the Messiah, let us go on to perfection. Laid again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards Yahweh, of the doctrines of baptism and laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So we used to call in physical water baptism a dead work. Okay, then it says, why? Okay, so this is asking about the Ethiopian units. Ethiopian eunuchs baptism acts 8 and 38 acts 8 and 38 and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water both Philip and the eunuch and he baptized him right and when he, he was reading the Ethiopian eunuch was reading the book of Isaiah and he was in fact called um Yahweh said, go talk to this man. And then he did get in the water. He did baptize him. And then Yahweh took him away. Yahweh took Philip away. So he didn't get the full understanding. Okay, two. X 10, 47. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit as well as we? Okay. So they're thinking we should get in water, just like just like they did back when he was reading about John's baptism. Why then did the Jews name Apollos continue the practice of John's water baptism of repentance after Pentecost, Acts 18:24? And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of Yahweh and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of Yahshua, knowing only the baptism of John. So he didn't know about the fulfillment. Okay. Okay, so those are the three questions that I guess he's gonna answer. Yeah, that's right. that's what the other things, that's what the Acts of the Apostle, that's what it's about. Okay. We will give the true apostolic explanation to the questions mentioned above, as stipulated in their own epistles of instruction or interpretations of the scriptures, as revealed to them by Yahshua the Messiah and the Holy Spirit. After we have discussed some of the fundamental details of the Acts of the Apostles, leading to the confusion of so-called Christendom and their misunderstanding of the Great Commission, originating in Matthew 28, 19. In other words, the Great Commission is misunderstood because water baptism after Pentecost is mentioned in the Acts of Apostles is shown by the three questions. Okay. So we just... Matthew 28, 19. Mm -hmm. I started 18. And Yahshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's that's the part that they missed. When they read the book of Acts, they see baptism in there and they say, okay, we're gonna continue with this. They see right. physical water baptism. So then, uh, should, we, should we just read over this and then go down here and start working with John 13? silence whichever way you want it yeah i think we should just read it because people just pick this up and yeah we did we did it yesterday so we won't read the scriptures i'll just read all the way down to john 13 right all right yes thank you okay these questions and the misunderstanding concerning water baptism that have plagued so-called christendom through the centuries are oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't mean to be a pain but can you just read this this title right here 
Acts of the Apostles, written by Luke, is an historical document and not a doctrinal epistle. These questions and the misunderstanding concerning water baptism have plagued so-called Christendom through the centuries are found in this historical document that are known to us as the Acts of the Apostles, which was written by Luke while he was in Rome about A.D. 61-63. If Luke had not written the Acts of the Apostles, Christendom would not have any record of the practice of water baptism after the crucifixion of Yahshua and after the day of Pentecost to which they could have referred to establish the erroneous carnal-minded interpretation of the great commission of Yahshua the Messiah. Paul did not continue the practice of water baptism because he said that Yahshua sent him not to baptize but to preach the gospel. Luke sent this historical document to his excellency, Theopia, the Lus, a person in high official position. In writing the Acts of the Apostles, as it is called, it is apparent that Luke had no intentions whatsoever in writing an authoritative or apostolic pastoral epistle no apostolic thank you pastoral epistle nor did he address it to any one of the uh, churches or congregational assemblies established by the apostles in local or foreign territories he wrote a true record of fact or current events in defense of Yahshua the Messiah his apostles in the ministry, the Jewish and Gentile disciples or converts, and sent it to Theophilus, hoping to relieve them of further or continued persecution for preaching the gospel of the Messiah. In AD 40. I'm sorry, I, I, maybe I heard it wrong. It's, it's like he wrote, a, he wrote a true record of past, right? I you past or current events. Okay, I, I think I heard it wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. I forgot what it was. All right. The for preaching the gospel of the Messiah. Okay, in AD 43, Herod the king uh, stretched forth his hand and killed the apostle James and imprisoned Peter. But the angel released Peter when Luke wrote the Acts of the Apostles. He had spent many years with Paul, Peter, and others in the ministry. He also engaged in communication with them in the apostolic councils held in Jerusalem and Antioch. Therefore, Luke knew and understand the true doctrine of Yahshua the Messiah is taught by word of mouth by all of the true apostles of the Messiah. Moreover, he understood the principles of the doctrine taught in their epistles, revealed to the apostles by the Holy Spirit, which Yahshua the Messiah himself promised they would receive after his departure. Without another water baptism, for as Yahshua said, John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not water, not many days hence. As you read Luke's reference to water baptism in the Acts of the Apostles concerning Philip, Peter, and Apollos, recognize that so-called Christendom, many years after the decease of the Apostles, has used this historical document instead of the doctrinal epistles of the Apostles to reestablish John's water baptism of repentance under the disguise of Christian water baptism to represent the Great Commission, which Yahshua gave to the apostles in Matthew 28, 19, or the washing of regeneration by the Holy Spirit. 
In other words, after the decease of the apostles, Christendom has confused John's water baptism of repentance with the Great Commission by using the Acts of the apostles instead of using the doctrinal epistles of the apostles themselves. Okay, so that's basically the end of the sentence, which we have the 13th chapter of John on. Right. Um, so does anybody have anything to say about Yahshua washing the disciples' feet? That's what we're talking about. I can show it in the Law and the Prophets. Thank you. Okay. You want the chart? Uh, I don't know, just a minute. Um, okay, let's get a couple verses. Let's go back to John 13, 4 through 10 and read that. And that you always must remember that when Yahshua, Yahshua is fulfilling what's written in the law and the testimony. Mm -hmm. John 13 and 4. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Okay, so right there, he's washing the disciples' feet. Keep reading, please. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Master, dost thou wash my feet? Yahshua answered and you said that, unto you think about You think about him asking that. He's obviously washing his feet and he's asking, dost thou wash my feet? And that's kind of funny right there. But then we're going to go on and we're going to tell you, you know, he's going to answer him too. But go ahead, go read seven. Yahshua answered and said unto him, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Okay, so what Yahshua is doing right now, washing feet, you don't know, but you're going to know hereafter. All right, you can get the elementary chart and I'll just show you something quick on there and then we'll read the rest of this. I want to read through 10. Elementary chart. Elementary chart. Okay, if you go to the bottom of the elementary chart and you have the first one where Yahshua goes through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and then you have your Pentecost plate which is what the you know that's a some of this acts is what we're looking at right here but anyway you have um the holy spirit being poured out on the jews and you have a picture of it right there holy spirit being poured out on the jews and what you have in the bottom plate is you have the last supper and yashua passing around the cup and and also you have the foot washing and so before Pentecost, they did not know what he was doing. They didn't right. recognize that he was fulfilling the law and the testimony and that he was taking that old covenant or that old way of worship or the physical ways of doing things out of the way. They did not recognize that until they received the Holy Spirit. So that's why it's on this chart because it's out of, it's not, you know, you'd have that before Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection if that's what they were looking at. But it's got after it because they didn't understand it till the Holy Spirit was poured out. And this is something interesting that I just read in a transcript the other day about this, that if, if they did not know what he was doing when he was uh, washing feet and he said to them, you don't know what I'm doing, but you'll know later. What makes them think that they know what he was doing when he was passing around the cup? Yes, and I, I thought that that was pretty cool the way to put that because obviously they did not know what he was doing. In fact, they even said, uh, you know, does it, he said, does this offend you when they pad? Are you going to drink my blood and that type of thing? And he, they did not know that he was fulfilling that old covenant or taking away that particular um, part of the old covenant. Okay, so um, let's go to, I'll go back and read the rest of the other verses. Leave the chart up, please, Lenore. Read John 13, I think you were at eight. Okay, 13 and eight. Peter said unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Yahshua mm -hmm. answered him, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Rabbi, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. 
Yahshua okay. said not to him. Okay, sorry. Well, Peter always had a better idea, you know, at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Peter had some things going on, <laughs> definitely. But, you know, one of the things about Peter is Yahshua prayed for him. And you know, when Yahshua prays for somebody, you're going to be okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. 10. <laughs> Yahshua said to him, he that is washed needeth not have to wash his feet. Wait, did I read that right? Yahshua said unto him, he that is washed needeth not say to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Okay, so then he was talking about Judas Iscariot was not clean. He was the one that was going to betray him. All right, and that's in these verses too. Okay, so let's stick with the washing here. You can get the verses back on there, and then I'll go to the chart if I want to. But let's go to Exodus 30, 21, and Exodus 19, 10 through 14. Okay, Exodus 30, 21, you said? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So they want they shall wash their hands and their feet. Pick up one verse, I'm sorry, because just pick it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, read 19. 19. For Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. Okay, they so they're talking up the setting up of the labor, and they were going to wash their hands and their feet thereat. Keep reading, please. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come not near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto Yahweh. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Okay, so it's going to be a, a they're going to wash their hands and their feet at the labor. And that was with the priesthood before they could minister when they were ministering in the tabernacle. And this is come something, too, to think about with this particular verse, even to him and his seed throughout their generations. This was an ordinance through to their generations, the Jews. It was not an or, ordinance to all generations like the name is. And that's something important to look at because he, he gave hints along here about what was for the Jews and gonna to be to their seed and their generations and then what was gonna be for everybody. Okay, so this was to the Jews and the Jews only, this particular one. Okay, go to uh, Exodus 19. 19 and one. 10 through four. At Exodus 19 and 10. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and okay. let them wash Let's their clothes. See, they were told to sanctify and to wash their clothes. They were all supposed to wash up, sanctify them, set apart, right? Right. Go to the people and tell them to sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. Okay, go ahead and read. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So the people, he's going to come down in the sight of all the people upon the mount. Now, Dr. Kinley talked about this as being a foot washing because it was the foot of the mountain where they came up and Yahweh spoke unto them. Um, I, I thought that was pretty cool to even think that that could be a foot washing. Nobody put that together but him. You understand? All right. So I hope you see that. We don't have to get the other verses. Okay. Get me Isaiah 1 and 16 and then go to Hebrews 10 verse 22. Isaiah 1 and 16. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. So this is back in, in the law and the prophets. They're supposed to wash and be clean and put away. And you know, this is not just physically. Put away the evil doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. But the washing was an example of it, right? They, when they washed up, it was an example of being clean through the spirit. Okay, now let's go ahead and get Hebrews. You know, we you have the verse in there that you you're washed by the water by the by the word of Yahweh. 
Um, I can't remember where that is. If you know where that is, that'd be a good one to get to. Height is three five, I think. Okay, thank you, Marie. If you have that, read that, and then get me Hebrews ten and twenty two. To see what everything that he did, he didn't come up. Well, well, I'm, I think I'll foot wash today, and that'll be a good idea. He's fulfilling to bring it to an end. And even when he told his apostles to do this, you know, to do it, it was for them to do it. He didn't tell us to do it. He didn't tell Christianity to do it. He didn't tell the Jews to do it after he died to take it away. He was talking to them and them only when he told them, you should also wash each other's feet, understand? And you also have a principle of the soul being there on your foot. And that's something, you know, I haven't really looked at that, but um, let's go ahead and read this. The Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing okay. of the Holy Spirit. Okay, would you read that again? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, right? but according to his mercy, he saved us by right. the washing of regeneration. Foot washing, no matter how much foot washing, no matter how much baptism, no matter how much eating of Lord's suppers, no matter how much lighting candles, all the things that we were taught in Christianity, and that we just, even if we weren't taught it, we thought was right, you understand? All those things, works of righteousness are not going to do you any good. Anything physical is not under the new covenant. You understand that? If it's a physical work, it is not something we're supposed to be doing for righteousness, all right? But it's by great or mercy. Well, read it again. It's not on the screen, so go but ahead. And according to his mercy, he saved us. But according to his mercy, he has saved us. Read on. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. The washing of regeneration, or you're washed by the word of Yahweh. You're washed by, you know, and it's the preaching of the gospel, really, that cleanses you now. That's what washes you. It, if you, it, preaching the gospel in the name of Yahshua, that's that baptism now. And that's the cleansing that's taken place. Let's go ahead and yes, get me one. In Titus, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, I, I want you to get me... Um, 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 13 and 12. For now we see through a glass darkly. Okay, it's 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. I want where you're baptized. Second Corinthians 13. Oh, I missed the verse. I can't remember where it is. It's maybe it's 12. First Corinthians 12. Try that one. <laughs> Sorry, Lenore. 12, 13. First Corinthians 12 and 13. For by one spirit no, are we all baptized. That is. Okay, go ahead and read then. Go ahead, read. First that is Corinthians. 12 and 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. For by one spirit we are all baptized into that one body. Read. Mm -hmm. Whether we be Jew or Gentile. Because after he goes through his death, burial, and resurrection, there isn't Jew and Gentile. There's just those that believe in Yahshua the Messiah are spiritual Jews. And everybody else is a heathen. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So we're baptized into that one body and we're drinking of that one spirit. And that's how you receive these things through the preaching of the gospel. In the name of Yahshua, you're immersed and that cleanses your soul. You're immersed in what his name is. When you hear the name of Yahshua, you check it out. It washes out that erroneous name, all right? When you hear the what Yahshua did, he was fulfilling rather than instituting, that washes out instituting, all right? And that's how you're cleansed now through the preaching of the gospel. That's the way Yahweh set it up. It didn't happen mm -hmm. by magic still. It happens through the preaching of the gospel. Why do you think he sent them out to preach? 
it wasn't just for fun. You understand? And, and right now, it's there is a purpose to preaching this stuff so that people get what's going on. All right. So um, go ahead and give me Hebrews uh, 10, 22, please. Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Okay, so that's that's beautiful. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. And that is you've seen these things happen over and over again, and you know it's going to happen just that way. That's what your faith is. Having mm -hmm. our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, including the feet. See, that's part of your body. <laughs> and our bodies mm -hmm. washed with that pure water. And that's that inner man that's being washed. The soul is being washed, all right? And the pure water is the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah comes right down from heaven. All right, that's all I had to say, Anna. I hope somebody got something out of it. Praise Yahshua. I just want to add one scripture here because she was talking about the conscience. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, first Peter, the third chapter, it's talking about Noah, so I'll read uh, 3, 20 and 21. Okay who at one time were disobedient when once the long-suffering of Yahweh waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, in which few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure unto which even baptism thus also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards Yahweh by the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. So when his resurrection is preached, his death, burial, resurrection, and that then the Holy Spirit's poured out, and that's how you're washed. Okay, praise Joshua. Thank you. Praise Joshua. I have a comment. Okay. Uh, if I may. Uh, uh, good morning, brethren. Uh, I like the way that um, Dr. Snyder uh, went through that. Um, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, when we look at our tabernacle pattern, and I know I don't know if I need to work to you to get that plate or the tabernacle pattern. It's not a work. Okay. Um, and let me know when you have it up, please. I got it. Okay, thank you. Now, when we look at the tabernacle pattern, uh, we're going to look at the court roundabout with that, um, those vessels, we have the brazen altar of sacrifices and we have the brazen labor and that's what we, what we are focusing on in this tabernacle pattern according to what has been said. So we see in this, this brazen labor was a twofold function. We had the top portion where the sacrifices were washed and Dr. Kinley referred to as the washing of degeneration. Mm. And the bottom, the bottom portion was where the priests would wash their hands and feet before they can um, minister into the holy place. And that was called the washing of degeneration. I mean, regeneration, re, R-E-G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N, -E 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 regeneration, regeneration. So we see uh, the tabernacle pattern, which is the key of knowledge, which is stated in Luke eleven fifty two. Well, we are looking to see how Yahweh has set these principles up in this pattern. So now when we go to, and we can get the washing with the migratory pattern too, but I'm not going there. I just want to uh, mention, um, because you had Titus three and five yes. read, uh, but I want to say this first, because we want to show in these principles that we're talking about, 
we also, we always want to show how Yahshua fulfilled it because it's talking about him. Right. And uh, Dr. Snyder already did that um, and bringing it also into a spiritual reality. But going back to where um, Yahshua in John the 13th chapter was, um, we know that Yahshua is fulfilling the scriptures, which Matthew 5, 17 and 18 talks about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now he gets up after they ate the supper. Mm -hmm. He got up and he washed his disciples' feet. When he got to Peter, well, Peter didn't want him to do that. And we know what he said there. I'm not going to go into that because I want to make the point, make a point. But Peter uh, didn't want Yahshua to wash his feet. He thought that was, uh, you know, uh, I suppose in a sense, um, you know, he thought, well, he was, Yahshua was a rabbi. He was the master. He was their master. And uh, he didn't feel that Yahshua should be, should lower himself, I guess, to wash his feet. But anyway, Yahshua, Yahshua said, if I don't wash you, you won't have no part with me. So we see that Yahshua did what, well, you know what Peter said, not only my my feet, well, wash my head and my hands. I think that's what it said in the scripture. But anyway, um, what I, the point that I want to make here in Yahshua fulfilling this, what we want to uh, keep in mind with this scripture also is that Yahshua, he's fulfilling a function there, and, but he's also preparing and this is one of the key things. He is preparing his disciples here, which was not all, because you know Judas uh, betrayed him. But he was preparing them for the ministry. Now, in preparing them for the ministry, you will see that Yahweh, because we're looking at Yahweh's purpose, Yahweh set up. Uh, the various wants in the ministry to uh, teach the people he always will. That's what he did with the founder, you see, when he gave him the vision. Man, what would you do with that that I've shown you? You see, and the answer came back, teach your people your will, Yahshua, you see. So we're looking at um, a ministry that um, we have now after this vision and revelation was taught to us. And I also was mentioned about the sole of your feet. Uh, um, yes, we, can, we, we have a feet that have a soul. <laughs> And that's, uh, one would say that's a play on word, but nevertheless, we're not talking about a S-O-L-E, which again, we are, but we're, it's pointing to a spiritual principle, which is our soul. We have a soul to be saved and that soul has to be washed. And what I mean by that is, and the way that it is washed, I'm, I mean to say, is that when the God, the gospel of Yahshua, which is the death, the burial, the resurrection. We have the witnesses of the blood, the water, the spirit, and our principle of 40. That is, when that is preached, the gospel is preached in truth. See, your soul can be washed, and then you can receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what this is all about. You have to be washed. So those ministers that Yahshua, you see, has washed and he is in them, when they receive him or he gives them the Holy Spirit, you see, 
uh, it's not just for themselves. You see, this knowledge and understanding is not just for you. You have a job, if I could put it that way, in that. And then it's not, you could say a job, but it's not really a job. It's a joy to be able to share this great gospel with someone else. And so this is why Dr. Lamar Allen have this Zoom class. We have the other Zoom classes. I have some, uh, some classes that I love to attend. I just left from one. You know, we have these Zoom classes. And for those of us who, uh, who have been regenerated, I put it, because I just talk about that washing of regeneration, you see, then we, it's a joy to be able to share, not to show ourselves, because it isn't about that. It's about you sharing what Yahshua has shown and you want somebody else to see and understand what you have been given. I know that we, I have seen that Dr. Tracy, Sister Tracy Robinson is still with us. It's a joy to see her still coming. It's a joy to see others who have heard this teaching and of course our brethren, you see? So I just wanted to share uh, that bit. I didn't, uh, I say, um, I'm not going to say anything, but when you're moved to do it, you just have to do it. So that is my comment. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. And you're, you're dovetailing right into what I wanted to talk about. And you were talking about a, uh, you were talking about regeneration. And I looked it up, it means the process of regenerating or the state of being regenerated. That's not so helpful. Biology, regrowth of lost or destroyed parts or organs. And did you know that your rib, if you crack a rib or you break a rib, that that can, that can grow forth, that can, that can regenerate? And also the liver, um, if you are injured, that 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 can be that can be used to to grow back so um and i was thinking about yashua said do you going to have a new heart so that the old one get rid of it you're going to have a new heart a new way of thinking and and i i can i can always see it i see it so much with peter i could just relate to him so much don't don't watch me you know i feel that i am so much lower than you yashua that you shouldn't be washing my feet. You're the rabbi. You're, you feed the multitude. You heal the blind. Why should you be lowering yourself, humbling yourself so much that you would wash my cup, my uh, you know, my comely, uh, you know, my my nasty fishy feet. You know, I'm a fisherman. I'm nobody. And 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 if we can understand the, what happened is that if when you walk through the streets back there dust grit sand and everything you will come into um someone's home and a servant would wash your feet you know the master was not coming to wash your feet a servant would be sent with a basin and a towel to to wash your feet you know you know uh, because of your status and so when he goes and washes his feet, that is like, wait a moment, don't do that. But then he says, you know, I, I got to wash you every bit. If, if I do this, then you're washed. So I, I can understand that. And so the other meaning of regeneration, because it's the washing of the water by the word, a spiritual or a moral revival or rebirth. So you can see that Peter, he's afraid, he's cursing. I don't know him, leave me alone never met him then when he receives a change of heart a growth in his heart what happens he is not afraid to talk to the powers of the world um he's talking to um we, we he was talking to the priest he's talking to his kin and 
all the all the power up there and he's he's telling them you know the the one that you killed that was the messiah and this and he's basically he's in principle he's saying all the way shadrach meshach and ben we're not going to be careful <laughs> we see this yashua and what they saw happen and it just it just gets me what they saw happen was the man hounded beaten up put on a cross pierced in the side you know just sort of done there's no coming back put into put into uh put in put into the tomb and then he's back and he's not uh he doesn't have a tooth missing <laughs> he's in perfection you know just standing there able to feed them and to talk to them that was an amazing thing. So they had seen Yahshua go through a death, burial, and resurrection. When they saw that, what else are you going to do to me? It's like this, they saw um, Lazarus come back from the dead. What are you, you know, we always used to say that. What are you going to, what are you going to do? Yeah, Satan has always proved that he's got the power of death, killing children at the time of Yahshua's coming in, killing children at the time of Moses. That ain't no, it ain't no hard thing to kill a baby. You know what I'm saying? But this one has the power of life after death. Show me, show me something now. And that's what so, was so amazing about it. And what I was looking at is, um, uh, John the 13th chapter if we go back to that I'm going to take a little bit of time but not too much time um, but I just thought that this was truly amazing and the thing about this teaching it's encouraging for your everyday life uh, okay let me see I want to pick it up okay yeah can we just pick it up from one please John 13 and 1 now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Right. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. <clears throat> Yahshua, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands and that he was come from Yahweh and went to Yahweh. And sorry, and I'm just want to inter interrupt, but it's saying um, we understand that Yahshua has come to fulfill. He's fulfilling that Passover lamb. The Passover lamb was innocent. The lamb was, was they had to eat of this supper. So that's what they're eating of supper. They would do this in memory of me. What's the memory? that Yahshua, Yahweh took them from death to life. And he is, he, is as that, he is as that lamb laying down his life for them. So can you keep reading? Okay. And, and, and the lamb incidentally was perfect without spot and blemish. And even when he's going up to the powers that be, Pilate say, I don't see any fault with him. And you read about Pilate just in history. He was not no nice guy. But this, it had to be such a contrast. Everyone else would come and yelling and screaming and I'm innocent, get your hands off me and all this kind of stuff. And this one opened not his mouth. And this one goes willingly and say, well, wait, 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 wait. Why are we killing this one again? Don't you, don't you want Barabbas? No, no. Give us it. Well, what has he done? And then he washes his hands at a whole situation. But there was a contrast that was going on. And Yahshua was talking, showing forth being obedient, being humble. It talks about unto the end. It wasn't like, um, uh, you'll see that, that somebody will do something really horrible. Go around um, recently uh, in uh, Michigan, went around killing students, right? Cause he's having a hard time his mother died so everybody's got to suffer because he's suffering and so you know you can see satan saying you don't have to take this nah, 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 take them out they, their lives are so easy whatever he's telling them then he gets to a part where he's alone he's doing his own thing and he kills himself satan left him 
you know, Satan, he does not support you. He doesn't say like, oh, it's all right now. You're going to jail. It's going to be all right. No, kill him, kill him, kill him. Oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah, well, kill yourself because he's he's craving your soul. Okay, keep going, please. Four. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he had poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. And this is the thing that got me about this. He's washing the disciples' feet. He's totally humbling himself as a a master or or a Lord, usually does not humble himself to his servants so he is humbling himself he is he is you know preparing his clothing taking out a ta- uh a towel and we had and i was amazed we had when, when we were meeting together we had young children with us and we were demonstrating washing one another's feet and this is what we said well i said so pretend you're washing this man's feet and he got on his knees to wash them. And I was like, whoa. I mean, that's like, to me, that's coming all the way down. You know, that's, that's what we would call like a prayer position, you know, but he came all the way down. And I was like, wow, I never thought of it that way. I just thought he, you know, like, (laughs) put your foot up. (laughs) He came all the way down to wash, to wash their feet. He humbled himself that Moses, is walking around with Joshua, the son of Nun, and he is, in fact, the son of the Most High. He is Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, um, walking around in a physical body. And if you want witness for it, you can see at, at the end of the book of, of uh, Joshua, he just exposes himself. And I took you out, and I did this, and I did that. So he is exposing himself. But he walked around when you were just looking at Joshua walking around with Moses, he looked like Moses' secretary. So Yahshua is walking around with them and he is he is helping them. He is leading them. He is protecting them. And he is humbling themselves. Not unlike, because you've done it yourself in the flesh, when you have offspring, you are way more powerful than your offspring, right? Um, you weigh more, you know more, you can do more, but you humble yourself for this new life so much so that if you're you're a married woman and your husband wakes you up and starts screaming at you in the middle of the night and says i'm hungry i'm hungry i'm hungry get me something to eat and and afterwards uh i want you to rock me jack back and forth gently and i, and I want you to rub my back and sing me a song you say like say what but a child <laughs> you were totally middle of the night Jump up, you know, if you're using the breast, use the breast. If you're using the milk, use your milk. Go, comfort him, pick him up, talk to him, laugh with him. My mother used to say that how she would be up all night with my brother because he had a pain in his back and she would be singing to him and dancing with him and putting on the records and everything. Totally lowering yourself, humbling yourself to take care of this next generation. Not unlike you read about, you hear about Dr. Kinley, I was thinking about this, how somebody um, from this teaching had had a fire in their home and Dr. Killing, Mary Gross, I think, told me this story. He, Dr. Killing wasn't feeling well and he, he was in bed. And when he heard that this person's f- had, house had caught on fire, the person came over to the house and he stayed up with her and comforted her and talked to her and encouraged her. And she was there for a while. That's what Mary Gross was talk, telling me. And when this woman finally left, he jumped back into bed. It was just, I'm just trying to show the humility. And I was, I talked to Michael Colucci and um, Dr. Kinley apparently and one of the transcripts says, bend over backwards for one another. And that's, that's not the world. That's why you need a new heart. Because <laughs> in this world it's like, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Like, no, not him. Keep going, please. Okay, verse four, five, uh, six. Six. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Master, dost thou wash my feet? Yahshua answered and said unto him, What?
What's the problem? Saith unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Yeshua answered him, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Master, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yeshua saith unto him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. For he knew. Go ahead, go on. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore, he saith, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and he was set down again, he saith unto them, know ye what I have done unto you? Ye call me master and ruler, and ye say, well, for so. Well, rabbi means teacher. I know we keep jumping over it, but it, it means a teacher. Ye call me rabbi and ruler <laughs> and you say well but mine says master and lord oh, okay so i was trying to figure out what to put in there. well in the holy name they have master and rabbi but go ahead <laughs> oh okay so 14 if i then your rabbi and master have washed your feet ye also ought to wash one another's feet for i have given you an example that ye should do as i have done to you Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his master, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Okay, so he was talking about, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. He's, he's talking about that do this, and you know, what I have done, you do it also. If I then, your master and, ra and rabbi and master have washed your feet, you are to wash one another's feet. We look at each other like, Ugh. for I have given you an example that you sh should do as I have done to you. Now, can I read um, Galatians 6 and 1? Yeah, I get a question in real quick. Yes, you can. Dr. Allen, Go ahead. Can you say that the servants uh, wash people's feet when they enter into their master house. Yeah, uh, that that you know you're you you have a home, you know, and that somebody comes in and somebody comes in because it was nasty there. It's not like now. Even now, you can see a type of it in cities like New York, where you'll see a um a scraper at the door where you can scrape your your feet off. Why? Because the place used to be full of horses. And you would be walking down the street and you would get horse mess all over your shoes. So when you attire, before you walk into this house, scrape your feet off. Yeah. So what did you want to know? Yeah. It, it, uh, did you get that from the scriptures or, or is that historic? Yeah, that's just historic. No, I didn't particularly get that from the scriptures. But you can you can see how that would be a job for a servant. It wouldn't be like yeah, yeah, yeah I could see. I, I, but I've never read in the scripture before. No, I I haven't read it, and I don't remember reading it in the scriptures either. But you can see that's why he was so amazed. Why yeah. you're washing my feet? Yeah. You know that's that's for a lower person to do, not you know like like if man has a, a secretary. You know, and somebody comes in, he says to the secretary, get the coffee. Usually the, the boss is not getting coffee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But why ain't they kissing feet? <laughs> <laughs> they see because they gotta overdo. That's why. I will I will be like the most high, and they want to be better than the most high. So they're not just gonna wash the feet, and the washing the feet is pointing to preaching the gospel, cleansing the soul with the true word. Uh, you know, the true word of Yahshua, not outdoing who can, who can be the most humble. You know, they, they, you know, they're, you know, they're just, they're putting out an act. Yahshua wasn't acting. Does that make sense? Well, I know. I was just having some, a little fun in class. Excuse me. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get Galatians 6 and 1? Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you, so, which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Okay. Keep going. 
bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of the Messiah. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Mm -hmm. But let every man prove his own work, and then mm. shall he rejoice in himself alone and not in another. That's right. Okay. For every right. man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived. Yahweh is not marked, mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So what I was the I was looking at when Yahshua, everything he does is in fulfillment. And sometimes I, I have to try to remind myself, well, what is this fulfilling? Why is he washing feet? Why is he doing that? And can we get um okay, it's Leviticus eight and six. Leviticus eight and six. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. So it's like they're getting to, they're setting up the tabernacle and Moses is saying unto the congregation, you're reading that in five, this is the thing which Yahweh commanded to be done. Now, Moses, we would see him as, you know, he's the great intercessor. He's Yahshua's second in command. He's the one that when they mess up, he says, take my name out of the book. So it's like he's showing that he, he cares for them. And he brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. And it talk, talks about how he dressed them and got them ready to do the service of Yahweh. So I was just trying to see, we're reading all the way back. When we're reading in Acts, what is Yahshua doing when he's washing their feet? He's doing the same thing that Moses did. He's washing, he's preparing the, um, the priesthood to be to be to be clean in, in what they're going to have to do. So Yahshua washes his apostles' feet. You can pick it up with Moses. He's washing Aaron and his son, the priest's feet. And it talks about in Galatians, bear ye one another's burdens. So it's like uh, a burden is a is a weight, it's an act. It's a sacrifice. So Yahshua, he's preparing them to go out into the world and to preach the gospel. And, and their, their souls have to be cleansed up before they can go on. Now you go and you preach, you go and you're being prepared to preach for the world. He's showing how he's dying for them and they're gonna go off and die for somebody else. And then you know how they have this thing in, um, uh, you know, at stores and stuff, they'll say, pay it forward. Like, you know, um, somebody would have paid for, you know, your lineup, somebody would have paid for your meal. So you say, okay, let me pay for somebody else's meal. Okay. So Yahshua is encouraging us as for we are as the body and the body takes care. The body takes care of itself, pay it forward, take care of the next person. And so I was thinking back when you, I was thinking about, okay, bear ye one another's burdens. That's not that's generally what not the world wants to do. It's like, bear your own burden. <laughs> you know, that that's the way people tend to be. Um, so he's bearing their burdens over here. And I was thinking all the way back here, you can see where Adam and Eve in the garden, they're told not to eat of the fruit. Eve eats of the fruit. Eve is deceived. Is Adam deceived? No. So when he eats of the fruit, he's taking on her problem. And he's not saying, well, you know what? I was listening to the to a lecture and the ribs regenerate. So uh, get me another bride because this one's defective. He's not doing that. He dies willingly for his bride. They are, they are one, you know, bone of my bone. They are united. They are one. They are really married. So he dies willingly for his bride. And, and so when he is caused to go out, because they're watching and say, oh, wow, it's, I'm going to be missing him. It's nice up here. I don't know where he's going, but I'm really going to miss him. I think I'll go have an apple. No, that's not what she's doing. She's, she's, he's, you can see he's in torment 
and she's looking at him and she's following him out. Bear ye one another's burden. What's what she's got to do? What's her job? Childbearing. Is she going to be bearing a burden? Yep. Yes, indeed. <laughs> She's going to be bearing a bear. It says, bear ye one another's burden and then bear you your own burden. And then these children are growing up and they're going to have to be bearing one another's. They're going to have to be somebody carry them and then they're going to have to carry somebody else. So then I was looking at um, Noah built these built these ark. He had to preach to them for 120 years. Stop what you're doing help build this ark where you know um Yahweh's not happy with this world and so they had to they had to bear this thing but the people who bore the ark everybody didn't come and take part of that a portion of the people so they have to carry wood and they have to do things and they're bearing the burdens of the other people but then when the information was given out okay now it's your turn now, what are you going to do with the information, you know, bear your own burden? The information was given out. Are you going to listen? Apparently, they didn't. Who got into the ship? Noah, his bride, his three, their three sons, their brides. They're the ones that, that went in, and Yahweh sealed the door. Um, can we get, I think it's um, Ezekiel 33 and 4. Let me see if I can get this, baby. Ezekiel 33 and 4. Okay. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Okay, could you pick it up in one, please? One. Again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchmen. If when he okay, so he's the watchman, he's got the responsibility, he's got the authority. Um, when you see something coming, I have got to give the message. There is danger coming. That's my job. So he's he's at a high. He's got to be at a, at a high tower, someplace where he can see. And so he's got this responsibility. So he's got to bear the burdens for the blood of these people. Keep going. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and take not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So he sees what's happening. He blows the trumpet. What's the trumpet? You got the buccinator muscles in your cheeks um, for, for preaching. And they've, he's got the responsibility of warning the people. If he does warn the people and they don't listen, it bear you bear you your own burden now. I took the responsibility. I told you. Keep going. He hear the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Mm -hmm. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the i don't feel like blowing the trumpet i'm sitting back here with my friends and i'm playing dice okay so then what happens and the people be not warned then there's the a big problem come, if the sword come and take any person from among them he is taken away in his iniquity but his blood will i require at the watchman's hand so if he doesn't give the message he's going down and the person that didn't receive the morning he also was coming down so it's like somebody's over somebody's overcome with a problem well who was overcome with the problem the world of yahweh the world was in great jeopardy from the time all the way back with adam because what's eternal life knowing yahweh they had no way of of knowing yahweh until yashua comes yashua messiah comes in and fulfills and takes that sin off of them. So all of these different ones who got a little bit of enlightenment, the um, prophets, they would come in. Yahweh would show them a little bit. They would share them, and then they would share what they would get, what they were given. And then it's up to you. It's like, hey, I'm bearing the burden. And I, I got, I was reading this today, and I was like, wow, 
Yahweh don't play. Um, so can we read Jeremiah 19? Okay, let me see. Yeah, read read 19. I, I know it's a little bit long, but it's very exciting. Jeremiah 19 and 1. Yes. Thus said Yahweh, go and get potters earthen bottle and take of the ancient of the people and of the ancient of the priests and go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the east gate and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee mm -hmm. and say, hear ye the word of Yahweh, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his, whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Okay, so bad times are coming, but Yahweh is not just doing stuff for no reason. For he's telling you, why are you going to be um, punished? And could you read it a little bit faster? Because I know time is fugitive. Okay, Jeremiah 19 and 4. Because they have forsaken me and have exchanged this place and have burdened, burned incense in it unto other ales, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. Okay, you're not listening to me. You're praising other Elohims. You're killing the innocent. I got a problem with you. Things are gonna happen. Jeremiah has to say this thing and it's gonna cause your ears to tingle because you don't wanna hear what Yahweh is gonna, how Yahweh is gonna repay. Okay, keep going. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it unto my mind. So do you see why Yahweh is upset? You're taking his offspring. You can't do it on your own. You're taking his offspring, your sons, and you're offering them unto Baal and burning them alive. I got a problem with you. You understand that? Go ahead. Therefore, behold, the days come, said Yahweh, that this place shall no more be called Topeth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Right. And I will make Go ahead. and I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in the place. And I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of them that seek their lives and their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowl of the heavens and for the beast of the earth. Okay, so you're gonna be repaid for bowing down to Baal, offering your children. It's not for nothing, okay. And I will make this city desolate and any hissing, everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and his because of all the plagues thereof. People would just go like, oh man, what did you guys do wrong? Go ahead. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the Seed, 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 that's right. And straightness wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. So what a siege is, is like a, a way of, one of the ways of war. You have people living in a town and you just lock down the town so nobody can get in, nobody can get out, nobody can get their food, nobody can send for help. They're stuck. And when you're stuck and you're all dying because you're starving to death because you are offering up your kids to bail for to bail, guess what? You're gonna be eating your own children, the sons of your flesh, the sons of your daughters, the sons of your strangers. And and look at look at what has happened to their heart and mind. Because instead of looking at your offspring as as uh 
a treasure or a wonder or something, a, a gift of Yahweh, you're looking at them and thinking, how can they fulfill my hunger? Keep going. 10. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee and shalt say unto them, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, even so will I break this people and this city and one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Topat till there be no place to bury. Okay, there's going to be so much death that you're going to run out of places to bury people. And we've seen an example like that where they just had so much, the, over 40,000 people have been killed in the um, earthquakes in Syria and in uh, Turkey. And they just, they're not having these individual little um, funerals. They're just digging a hole. And then they're taking the bodies, going through the bodies, seeing if they could um, identify that and just putting them in holes and just covering it over. So, so y'all is going to, there's going to be so much degradation because you turn your back on me, you're going to have a problem. Keep reading, please. Thus will I do unto this place, saith Yahweh. And to, the inhabitants there, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Topheth. And what people got to understand is that Yahweh does have a wrath. See, some people, sometimes we think that, oh, he's just the God that makes the flowers grow. No, he does more than that. And when they turned their back on Yahweh, they had to pay. And you can see, we were talking about a sinkhole the other day, how there was a man, and I, f I found it on, on, on YouTube. You can, you can look it up. There was a man that was living in Florida. He was in his house, and all of a sudden, a big sinkhole came and just de destroyed. His house just went down. It was so deep that nobody could get to it. And he was screaming and yelling and screaming and yelling, and finally he died. So Yahweh has that power to just swallow it, and that's all the way that went back with... Um, uh, Dathan, um, can't think of the other guy's name. They they would not come up to Yahweh, and Yahweh just said, you know, you're going to go in a way that nobody's really heard of before, and then you're going to know that I did it. So he just opened them up. He said, get away from them. People didn't get away from them. He opened up the earth and just covered them and just went on with his life. Keep going. And the house of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judea shall be defiled as the place of Tophet mm -hmm. because of all the houses upon whose roof they have burnt incense unto all the hosts of heaven and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Yes, go ahead. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet where the Yahweh had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of Yahweh's house and said to all the people, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. So it's not like they don't understand or he's speaking in a foreign language or anything. It's like, they have hardened their necks. And Yahweh said they were a stiff-necked people that they might not hear. I don't want to hear this, right? Now, why? what does that got to do about bear you one another's burdens? It's pretty, it's pretty bleak. But what's that got to do anything? Okay, so can we read 20, please? Chapter 20? Yes, please. Now, is that Phasar? The Pastor, son of I don't know, the son of Immer. I don't know how to say it. Go ahead. Okay. Now, Phasar, the son of Emmer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of Yahweh, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Okay, so he's a chief, he's a chief governor. He's heard what Jeremiah has been saying. How do you think himself being a uh somebody of power in Jerusalem, how do you think he feels about what um Yahweh has been causing? Jeremiah to say, think he's happy to hear that message? No. Keep going. Then Phasar smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in a stack 
stock stock that were in the high gates of Benjamin, which was by the house of Yahweh. So I looked and it up stocks, you know, um, they show that sometimes they would take somebody and you, your hands and your head and everything would be encased in wood. And it also could be jail. So it's a, it looks like P-A-S-H. That's why I pronounce it Pasher. He smote Jeremiah for what he had. He said, oh, my kids are going to die. Uh, we're going to be eating each other. I don't think so. I don't like this word of Yahweh. Okay, keep going. And it came to pass on the morrow that Phazar brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, Yahweh hath not called thy name Phazar, but Magar, Misabib. Okay, and it, you know what? If somebody could look those words up, they're significant. Oh, it means Magar Misabib means a, a terror on every side. And I forgot what Pasha meant. I did look it up this morning. I have it here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Pasha means freedom. Okay, freedom. Okay. And Magar Mishabib means terror on every side. Yeah, so it's like your name means Peter. Your name means freedom, but you should be called terror on every side. Go ahead. Also, Tophet means place of burning, and Hinnom means lamentation. Okay, so they're going to be having hard times. Thank you. Fourth verse, for thus saith Yahweh, behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and their eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah unto the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon and shall slay them with the sword. I don't know if anybody remembers the Wiz, the one who had Michael Jackson, but um, the the um, one of the characters is saying she was she was the head said, "Don't nobody bring me no bad news, no bad news." So he, that that's what he's saying. I don't like to hear what you have to say, but does um, Jeremiah said, "Well, man, let me clean it up," because he didn't like. He just keeps on saying what Yahweh has to say. Do you see how it, he's like? I am telling you what's going to happen to you. Do you see how giving the message is a burden? He's bearing their burdens. But then if they don't listen, they're going to suffer. Keep going. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city and all the laborers thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. And if you ever want to read about how Yahweh um, cursed the people, he says, like, you'll marry a woman and you'll never sleep with her. Now that's a curse. Go ahead. And thou, Pesar, and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there thou shalt die and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies. Okay. O Yahweh. Thou hast deceived me, and I was de deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. So do you understand when you go out and you say the name of your creator is, is, is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahshua, he came to fulfill this world we're preparing because this world is coming to an end. You have a spiritual body inside a physical body and we're coming we're getting to have a new heavens new earth you start preaching that and people laugh you to scorn yahweh Bahweh. that's the kind of stuff people have said to me and he says you know uh, I, I'm, I'm tired of this okay keep going for since i spake i cried out i cried violence and spoil because the word of yahweh was made a Approach unto me and a derision daily. Right. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart, and burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. 
So he says, you know what? I'm not going to talk about this stuff anymore. It just causes me not to be too popular. Nobody wants to talk to me when, when we go to the watering hole. Um, I'm not going to speak your name. I'm not going to make a mention of him, nor speak anymore in his name. Do you see how preaching the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah is as a burden? But his heart, but my word was his word was in my heart as a burning fire. You can didn't he say that he's gonna um that he is a consuming fire? Didn't he say he make his ministers as fire, right? Yes, Lenora, that's what he said. He's as a burning fire shot up in my bones. I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. I could not go against it. Okay, uh, can we read? Okay, yeah, can we, so can we keep reading? So you can, so you, can you see that Jeremiah going around preaching the gospel, getting beat up by the powers that be? It said they smote him. Smote is a, is a hit to kill. It wasn't some little pity pat punch. They wanted to take him out. Why? Because he was preaching the truth, the words of Yahweh. Why was he saying these horrible things? Because they were doing horrible things and that they were turning their back to Yahweh and worshiping Baal. So does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. For I heard the deframing of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we were reported. All my familiars, right? All my familiars watch for my halting. Yeah, saying, all, my, all my friends, all the people that were with me, they were waiting for me to go down, waiting for my halting, for my stopping, okay. Saying, pre-adventure, he will be enticed and we shall reveal, reveal shall against, prevail. and we shall prevail against him and we shall take our revenge on him. We'll get even but, with him. He'll he'll quiet down. But Yahweh is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greater, greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Keep going. Thank you. But O oh Yahweh, but O oh Yahweh of hosts, that tires the righteous that and tries so the righteous. He's he's testing you. Righteous. Excuse me, I'm sorry. He tried right. the righteous. He's testing you, and you can see it all the way back with um, uh, Moses. At one point, he's talking to Moses, and he says, "You know what? I'm sick of these people." He doesn't. I'm I'm just saying it the way I would say. It. I'm sick of these people. I'm done. And then Moses is. But he's trying Moses. He's saying, well, you know, if you do that, then the people back in Egypt were saying, you couldn't do what you said you were going to do. And you know what kind of a, an LOM you are. You know that you have, uh, that, that you're patient and long suffering and kind and you keep it. <laughs> so, so Moses, you know what, you know what a good L you are. So he's, He's trying, I'm going to get rid of him. Nah, that's not the way, that's not the kind of Elohim you are. So what has Moses learned? He's learned the nature of his creator. Okay, keep going. But, O Yahweh of hosts that triest the righteous and seeth the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my calls. Sing unto Yahweh, praise ye Yahweh, for he have delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Curse be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Curse be the man who brought tithings to my father saying, a man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which Yahweh overthrew and repenteth not. And let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting of noontide. Mm -hmm. Because he slew me not from the womb or that my mother might have been my grave and her womb to be always great with me. 
So he's saying how bad he feels. Man, I wish I'd never were born the kind of stuff that's going on. I don't want to see these things. I don't want to say these things, but it's a burning in me. And I got to say, do you see how it's a burden? If they will not listen to it, they are going down to Babylon. They are going to be killed. They are going to suffer and they have been warned. And that's what the teaching, that's what this teaching is. It's a warning to the world. This creation will not go on to, to forever. And he calls every man and woman to repent, turn around, go the right way. Somebody wrote me something. Okay. Wherefore okay. came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame. Okay, okay. Uh, so can we and 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 if we can get Mark 1436. Mark 1436. Mark 1436. And he said, Abba, Father. All things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what I will. So Yahshua, he's thinking about what he has to do. He's got to go to the cross. He's got to, you know, he's got to do this thing. He's saying, please take this far, this cup from me. And he's fulfilling. What is he fulfilling? Moses. I I can't talk. <laughs> You know, it's like, I, I can't do this job. You understand what I'm saying? Jonah, no, nah, I'm not going. You know what I'm saying? Take this cup from me. I can't do it. I, you know, personally, I I, I um, have been called, you know, to speak. And I thought, Yashua, I know you don't make, make any mistakes, but boy, have you made a good mistake. You have made a big mistake. <laughs> Take this cup from me. Take this burden. But Yahshua is going to have him bear his burdens, and then he's going to be he's going to be glorified. Yes, did somebody say something? Okay, First Peter two and eighteen, please. Okay. First Peter two eighteen. Servants, be subject to your masters. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay. Okay, can we get 15? Start at 15. Okay, thank you. For so is the will of Yahweh that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men is free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but mm -hmm. as the servants of Yahweh. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear Yahweh, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards Yahweh endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if, when you are buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently? But if, when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with Yahweh. Okay. Keep going. For even hereunto were ye called, because Yahshua also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. And isn't that right what he said to them at, you know, do as I have done, right? So it says here, Yahshua also suffered for us leaving for us an example that we should follow his steps. What did he do? Okay, keep going. He did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. And you can see he's on the cross and they say, oh, you save others, save yourself. Why don't you come down? You know, and, and you know, and, and it would have been, you know, what, what would the average person do? <laughs> I'm going to come down and when the, and the next time I see you, you're going to be in trouble. That's not what he did. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Then you can see that same spirit operating in uh, Stephen. 
He says, don't lay this to their charge. That's that's the spirit of, of Yahshua. That's the spirit. That's that's your direction. That's your destination. That's where you're going. Okay, go ahead. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself unto him that judges righteously. He's thinking about Yahweh. He's thinking about Yahweh's salvation and the job that has to do. He's not turning around trying to get even. Continue. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. Right. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So that's basically what I was talking about. Bear ye one another's burden. He bore the burden for the whole world. And then when you receive the spirit, then you can bear your, then you will bear your own problems and then you will be prepared to help the next person. Does anybody understand that? Anybody have any questions? I understood it. Well done. Well done, Lenore. I enjoyed you. I know it's kind of scary with Jeremiah, right? Yeah, you brought up some excellent points, sweetheart. Man, Yashua's not playing. I can tell you, you've been studying. You got to go back over this. Thanks a lot. Well, it's fun. It's fun, isn't it? When you see, like, you think you got problems? Well, look yeah, what Jeremiah was going through. It's fun to learn, and it helped me. You know, we all go through something. Yeah, man. If, if you ain't going through something, you got a big problem. Well, well, the thing is, you know, it goes ups and downs, but I just look at Jeremiah and I think, man, what, what am I crying about? <laughs> I've certainly been crying lately too, but you know, I'm getting better. Thanks a lot. That's right. He's the comforter. Yes, he is. Over and out. Lenore. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think uh, somebody was before me. I'll wait. Okay. Uh, did you notice the tax, um, Dr. Allman? Excuse me? Lucy? Lucy? I, I don't know. Maybe she walked away. Okay. I, I sent her a text because we have Dr. Renee Jackson with us today. And we always like to welcome our ministers from other classes. Yes, thank, yes, nice to see you, Renee. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to say, Dr. Kent? I just wanted to comment on one of the things that you had brought up in Galatians 6. Um, I know it's three minutes too. I'm not going to be real wordy. But basically, when you were going over about the um, bear ye one another's burdens, and also it's verse 2 down to about verse four. I'll just read it right quick. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Yahshua. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Right. Verse five, for every man shall bear his own burden. So in the previous chapter uh, of Galatians, five and about uh, 13, I think it was, yeah. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Right. So basically, what I was, why that was uh, mentioning that, is that this uh, preaching of the gospel and the whole, you know, what we're looking at here with the erroneous teaching of the water baptism and learning what the true washing of regeneration is and the preaching of the gospel that when it's done with love and that being Yahshua to a soul, you know, yes, we're sharing with one another that know, but yet even those that don't know that haven't caught on yet, 
that when it's done with love, that's the power. Uh, there was a few other things, but I'll just leave it there. So hopefully you're just tacking on to some of the things that was said today. Thank you. Well, we could talk afterwards if you're free. I know you work and pay social security. Cool. Anyone else? We got one more minute. Okay. Uh, Dr. Allen. Yes. I just wanted to share this, um, to speak to what um, some of what Christina was talking about. Um, mm -hmm. There's a pamphlet call, which you all might be familiar with. Preaching and teaching in the name. Yes. It will be it will be good to read what the founder says in that that pamphlet. It's very important about the gospel. Uh, um, what what the gospel does when it's preached um, the way that it's supposed to be preached. Um, that pamphlet is very very good to read. Hallelujah, Sybil, because that is what I was also wanting to bring up. I went to one of the pages. So maybe afterwards, like Lenore said. Okay, thank you. Lucy? Dr. Sound, is she here? Uh, oh, I'll wait. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. Uh, there's also a Zoom class for Jamaican Brethren, Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're also asking for people to please volunteer to help with moderating and reading and please stay on after class so we can uh, discuss it. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say together, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, I bless your day. Hallelujah. You too, darling. Hey, any moderators volunteering for next week? Silence. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people work. I, I would, but I'll be um, starting school soon. So <clears throat> I won't be able to get on these classes as much as I usually do. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. It's a thought that can't. No one is able to moderate next week. Oh, I'm not able to moderate. I got a, quite a few doctors appointments. I just need someone that is able to moderate next week. Okay, Lucy, I guess it's just you and me. Lila, are you, are you back at work? No, I'll do it. Yay! Okay, you can moderate next week. Thank you me. know, I'm just so new at it. I'm keep practicing and I'm looking and I'm and I'm, and, and it'd be good for me. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Practice make perfect. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lila. We'll be looking forward to hearing you on Tuesday morning. Great shot, Okay, chat. Scripture readers. I can help. 